History fact for you guys. The most used slang term in Midwestern towns in 1979 was... Mint. Yeah. time I have been waiting for Super 8 to come out. I remember seeing the preview which was almost all effects back then back when I saw Iron Man 2 and I was so revved up to see it and see this I thought it was gonna come out last summer and then I went oh it says next summer. Why can't that movie get moved to next summer that way we all know it sucks so we don't even see it then. You got these group of kids who have just gotten out of school for the summer and they're making their own zombie film on a Super 8 camera. They decide to go to a train station to go shoot their next big scene. That's until a massive train crash happens and in the midst of the destruction something gets released out of one of the freight cars and then the rest of the film turns into a giant mystery on to figure out what's going on in the town as all these strange events start to happen. As I said before I was really psyched for this film. J.J. Abrams is quickly becoming one of my favorite directors of this generation. And it's got Steven Spielberg producing. The film is full of Steven Spielberg homages that I was just so set for this film. And in the end, I gotta say, damn, this is what summer movies are made for right here. All the child actors from Joel Courtney playing Joe to Elle Fanning playing Allie, I think that's what her name was, they all do an amazing job. The script is filled with great dialogue to connect to these kind of characters to back then. And also, there's a lot of emotional depth between them that really is nailed down well by both them and director J.J. Abrams. And also Kyle Chandler. Great to see that guy still getting lead roles when he's not doing Friday Night Lights. But the two powerhouses behind this film are definitely J.J. Abrams and Steven Spielberg. Spielberg helped J.J. Abrams map out the story for this film. And you can definitely see how because the movie is absolutely filled with homages to Spielberg's films, especially Close Encounters of the Third Kind is probably the biggest one. A lot of people are trying to compare this film with other Spielberg films, so if I had to say it right, I'd say that's Cloverfield meets The Goonies meets Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Seems justifiable right there. But J.J. Abrams is the big driving force of this film. He may not be a director as strong as Spielberg, but he does an excellent job paying homage to the generation of films that he made back in the late 70s. And he also reminded me a lot about the late 70s in film itself, as there are a lot of posters showed off for a lot of famous films from back then, like Halloween and Dawn of the Dead. And also, just the concept of bringing Super 8 into this film just made a very nostalgic feeling to me because if I was back during that time, I would have been just like those kids. I would have wanted to go out and film a movie whenever I could, and heck, I'm trying to be a filmmaker today. I haven't made anything, but I got an idea in the works, though, so stay tuned on that. The special effects and action are done very well, and even the build-up to all the sequences of horror that happen, they're all done really well. You're really on the edge of your seat because there are a lot of gotcha moments involving the creature in this movie. The creature itself, if I had to describe it, I don't know if this is a minor spoiler or not, but this is just to give you guys a little bit of an idea. The way I saw it, it was like the Cloverfield monster meets the alien in the alien anthology. So that's pretty much how you can picture it. So that's the most I'll give away about the monster though. And also surprisingly, the film is very funny. Abram's script is filled with a lot of sharp humor in it, especially between all the kids' conversations that they have. I found myself laughing a lot at the scenes of comedy in this movie, which I was pretty surprised by because uh, even in Spielberg's movies, those don't happen as often. Often, but it really picks up the more it goes on sometimes in this film. The feelings of nostalgia, the homages to Spielberg, and just the feeling of going back to the late 70s where I would have done the same thing as these kids really evoked a lot of warmth inside me. I had a great time watching Super 8. It is such a great film, not only as a summer film, but any true Spielberg fan out there is just going to love this film. I'm going to give it a very strong 4.5 out of 5 stars. It's no masterpiece, but it is still great entertainment, and as a Spielberg fan myself, I got to say that Abrams did a great job paying homage to his films. So I hope all of you enjoyed my review of Super 8, and if you like this video, subscribe to my channel where you can check out more of my reviews and DVD and Blu-ray updates. Also, follow me on Twitter and follow my page on Facebook as well where you can check out where I might be able to get potential advanced screenings of or the upcoming films I am seeing or videos I'll be doing on my channel themselves. So in the meantime, I'm Tyler from Cali Critic Reviews, and I'll see you guys later.